In May and June, many of you participated in an international academic survey that we ran with our authors, our editors, and our reviewers. In order to capture how the pandemic has impacted you and your work, your perceptions of the political response, what impact you have seen on your research funding, your attitudes to publishing and sharing your research, how you can contribute to finding solutions, and most importantly, what are the lessons learned and how can we mitigate future disasters? It is the science that is going to get us out of this crisis. So it was imperative for us to give you, the scientists, a voice during this incredibly challenging time, especially when you are under such extraordinary pressure to provide answers. As far as we can tell, it is one of the largest academic surveys that has ever been conducted with over 25,000 of you participating. You represent 152 diverse countries, roles and areas of research. So thank you, thank you very much for contributing and allowing that scientific voice to be heard. Today, I would like to briefly highlight just three key observations from the report. So firstly, despite the massive disruption to your lives, you as a research community have been incredibly resolute with the vast majority of you being able to continue working. Writing papers for publication has become your most common task, something that we also felt at Frontiers, uh, seeing an increase in manuscript sub submission numbers. But this, um, above anything else, is incredibly encouraging and it gives us hope that you as the academic community will remain resilient to new waves of COVID, uh, like the second wave that many of us are experiencing right now in our respective countries. You had very mixed reactions over uh, whether policymakers had listened to scientific advice. Uh, there weren't too many surprises for us here as this mostly, mostly reflected what we could see happening in the news. Countries where researchers felt scientific advice was listened to include New Zealand, Greece, and China. And at the bottom of the list, the countries with the highest levels of dissatisfaction include the UK, Brazil, and the US. We would like to run a series of smaller surveys next year. So it will be interesting to see if these statistics change. Uh, will something like the election of Joe Biden, who is pro-science, change the perception of the policymakers in the US, particularly if his administration manages to mitigate and reduce the spread of COVID-19. The report has also been featured in numerous press outlets, including this one in The Economist, who also picked up on the policy angle in their news article. And finally, the results are showing that you are pragmatically considering how to prepare for and mitigate future crises. Your biggest concern is the threat of a future pandemic, including the dangers of new viruses, uh, vector-borne diseases, and bacterial diseases arriving, uh, arising from antibiotic resistance. Here, you stress the importance of learning from the current situation to prepare for future threats. And your other big concern is the key challenge of our time, and that is climate change. Here, you drew parallels between the immediate action taken to mitigate COVID-19 and the kind of action that is needed to tackle environmental threats. The report also contains commentary from experts in the field who worked with us during the analysis of the results to provide their insights into the findings. So I wanted to take this opportunity to publicly thank Professor Zia Li from Wazong Ag Agricultural University in Wuhan, Professor James Wilsden, Director of the Research on Research Institute, Professor Martin Seagoat, Co-Director of the Grantham Institute at Imperial College London, Professor Faith OCA, President of the International Union of Immunological Societies, 
and Professor Sir Peter Gluckman, Chair of the International Network for Government Scientific Advice. Your insights were incredibly valuable and they helped contextualize all of the findings. So thank you, thank you again. The report has received a lot of visibility and engagement by the public and we have received over 9 million views on our social media channels to date. If you haven't managed to look at it yet, we will be sharing the slides. So I have added the link in here for you. I do hope that you will find it useful and I look forward to working with you again next year um, to ensure that we maintain that scientific voice, pandemic or no pandemic.